Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. We are back with another topic on Azure Arc. Um, so we're actually going to be doing part two of the how to choose uh, the right Azure Arc service. We spoke a lot about Azure Arc enabled servers. Um, and in the, in the last video, if you remember, we demoed, struggled to, to do a demo of uh, onboarding an AWS account. We eventually got there um, using the sort of cloud, as AWS cloud formation. Um, so we're going to be talking about the second part of that, that, that subtopic, and then we're going to do another demo. I'm actually going to um, look at how we can, so that AWS um, resource, that VM, it's a Linux VM, is actually in Azure now. So I'm going to show you in Azure like, how we can manage that and, and some of the features we can use on it. So without further ado, let's get started. So this is, again, how to choose the right Azure Arc service part two. Um, again, there are going to be certain topics which do span over to a couple of different episodes, maybe. So today's episode agenda, again, same lines as, as, as last episode where talking about the different services that are based, you know, in your IT infrastructure and, and how you can translate that into Azure Arc services, which is the best one for you to use. So we're going to focus on Azure Arc Enable VM by vSphere, Azure Arc Enable SC VMM, and Azure Local as well. So let's talk a little bit about, I don't know why my presentations do this, but they always seem to realign their uh, their titles and some of the, I need to look at that, it's a bit of a strange one. So I do apologize for the title being a bit skew. But let's talk about Azure Arc Enable VM where vSphere capabilities first. So this is something that simplifies the management of hybrid IT resources that are distributed across VMware, vSphere, and Azure. Um, so running software in uh, Azure VMware solution as a sort of private cloud in Azure, this offers a lot of different benefits, uh, that not realized really by the operating, by operating your environment outside of Azure. For software running in a VM such as SQL Server and Windows Server, running in Azure VMware solution provides additional values such as you know the free um, extended security updates. Let's take advantage of these benefits if you're running uh, in an um, in AVS. It's important to follow sort of respective onboarding process as well to fully integrate that experience um, with that AVS private cloud. And this year, when when the VM is in uh, AVS uh, private cloud um, and it's Azure Arc enabled using a, you know a method distinct from the one that we outlined in the AVS public cloud documentation that Microsoft have. Uh, the steps in that are provided that they're there to kind of refresh that integration between Arc and AVS. Now let's talk about some of the capabilities specifically to VMware vSphere. So AVS and VMware vSphere are two different things, obviously. One of the capabilities is you can discover VMware vSphere estate, VM, VMs, templates, networks, data stores, clusters, hosts, resource pools, things like that, and register those resources uh, with Azure Arc at scale. You can perform various sort of virtual machine operations directly from Azure, such as creating, resizing, and sort of power cycling operations, such as start, stop, restart from VMware VMs consistently with Azure. And again, it's going to allow you to, it's going to empower you to um, sort of, especially your developers and application teams to self-serve when it comes to VM operations on demand using those uh, Azure RBAC controls. You can install Azure Arc enabled sort of Azure Arc connected virtual machine agent at scale and leverage all those sort of capabilities offered by Azure Arc. You can browse your vSphere resources, VMs, templates, etc., um, in that single pane of glass. And we will further down the demo, in the demos we're going to be looking at how to do that. I guess let, let's you use that sort of self service pipelines with sort of the when it comes to building automation using Python, Java, JavaScript, things like that, ARM, um, Bicep. Um, you know, uh, REST APIs, things like that. So let's talk about Azure Arc enabled SC VMM capabilities now. That, again, not too dissimilar, um, but SCC v SC uh, VMM is going to empower um, system center customers to connect their VMM environment to Azure and perform the sort of VM self service operations from the Azure portal. Now, Azure Arc Enable System uh, Center Virtual Machine Manager also lets you manage your hybrid environment consistently and perform all sorts of self-service VM operations through Azure Portal, the same way you can do with VMware vSphere. Again, same stuff lets you discover, lets you sort of uh, do the VM lifecycle. Again, empowers developers and application teams to self-serve. You can browse all those different VM extensions, the templates, networks, etc. You can install the sort of agent at scale the same way 
And again, you can also build automation. So those features and capabilities are not too different. Essentially, it's only the onboarding that's really different if you think about it. Uh, and then we have Azure Local capabilities as well. Um, so obviously Azure Local, what used to be Azure Stack HCI, this is a sort of hyper-converged infrastructure uh, OS that's delivered as an Azure service. And this is a hybrid solution that is designed to host virtual Windows and Linux VMs or sort of containerized workloads and their storage. Azure Local is a hybrid product, remember, and it's offered on sort of validated hardware as well. It connects on-premises estate to Azure, enabling those sort of cloud services. Again, when it comes to those capabilities, they're a bit more in-depth, but you can, again, same source of deploy and manage those workloads, including VM and Kubernetes clusters. You can manage the VM, VM lifecycle operations, starting, stopping, etc. You can manage Kubernetes lifecycle as well. You can install sort of Azure Connected VM Agent at you know, for Azure Arc at scale. You can leverage sort of additional stuff. You can actually leverage VDI, so uh, Azure Virtual Desktop for Azure Local. You can deploy those session hosts to your on-premises infrastructure, which is quite cool. And again, all the same stuff, empowering developers and applications teams to be more self-serving or do self-service, not self-serving, that sounds bad, self-service. <laughs> you can monitor, do updates as you monitor and, and, and update management um, and deploy and manage sort of static and DHCP-based logical networks on premises to your sort of host and your workloads. Uh, create and manage those storage paths as well. So there's a bit more in-depth uh, uh, capabilities with Azure Local. And then create and manage those storage paths that you can store your VM and configs on as well. Okay, we're going to jump into a demo of the, the AWS account that we added. That is actually there now in the last video we added that. So we're going to show you how and some of the management capabilities for that AWS resource that we have. So please join me in the demo. Here we are in the Azure portal again. We're in, we're in the Azure, Azure Arc part of the Azure portal in my MIT Geek tenant. So I want to show how to manage an actual uh, virtual machine. So we're, we're still with the AWS um, device here and it's got the agent installed and uh, what we can see is difference between a VM with the agent installed and one that doesn't have. This one down here doesn't have the agent installed. And you can see straight away, we've just got no features. So the agent's not installed and we've got, we can't access updates, we can't update logs, monitoring insights, anything like that. Whereas if we go back up to this one that's in the relevant resource group and we can see straight away, we can access updates, so stuff like that. Um, and we can manage it properly. So we can see all the information there as well, but as we go down, look, we can actually connect to the VM from here. So we can use Entra, SSH, key based authentication, password. Um, we can integrate it with Defender for Cloud, which we couldn't do before. Um, so again, right now, there's probably no recommendations. It's still sort of being looked at, sort of still being assessed. We can add extensions if we want. Uh, from an operations perspective, we can actually add, integrate it with Azure policy, assign policies, assign initiatives. When it comes to configuration, we can actually create machine configurations here for this specific um, instance and for this specific VM. If this was a SQL server, which it's not, we could do SQL integration. Here are the quite interesting ones here. We can actually um, integrate with update management here, so we can actually patch the device if we wanted to. Um, so at the moment, it's not periodic assessment's not enabled, so let's go and enable that. Um, and we want to enable that um, and then save that so it'll keep on getting um, assessed and then hopefully in here we'll see updates that are needed. We can do scheduling as well. And then from an inventory perspective, this will inventory the full um, VM. So you'll see a list of software, applications, anything like that. Uh, right now it's not enabled, but it's ready to enable. So this is the tracking and inventory. So again, it's a new VM that's been onboarded. So we need to enable that. Um, and that'll enable and then hopefully next time we come back to this VM we'll see a full inventory uh, and again same for change tracking as well that's been enabled as we speak and we'll go to, down to insights this is where we can integrate it with Azure monitor and application insights so again it's not been enabled yet but we want to integrate it with um, well, we'll just put it onto the SE100 um, workspace for now just to show the feature set we'll enable it so that's going to allow us to look at change tracking as well um, and the insights. So then we enable insights here. Um, again, nothing's enabled at the moment because this, this VM's literally just been onboarded. Um, so again, we can enable it with uh, data collection rules. Going to create a new one, configure that. 
just going to validate and then again next time we come to the vm we'll be able to look at insights and logs um and do use we can use um custom query language to to find and run different um kind of um, reports and uh, run different queries which is very very powerful as well so again, a lot of different things we can do, and I kind of said this in, in the in the sort of um, video already, the sort of management capabilities that we've got. Um, we can use update management. Uh, that's unfortunately failed on one of the deployments of something. Maybe I'm trying to deploy too much at two, two once, um, but we can come back to redeploying that later. Um, just go back to the Azure Arc VM here. So a lot of different things we can do from a management perspective for a virtual machine. In the next video, we're actually going to go a step further. I'm actually going to try and onboard. Uh, we've done a multi-cloud. We're going to actually onboard uh, VMware vCenter. So that should be quite interesting. Um, so that's the uh, lab. And this is, this, this is basically, um, that was part two of the topic around kind of what service to use when. And we are going to be moving on to um, some, some more Azure Arc topics now. Um, again, more labs as well. Um, this is obviously, this is not a member, this is not a normal subscrip subscriber video. So I'm going to put a link to my member as, uh, sort of content, which is all to do with Microsoft exam content. Got the different levels. Level one is for more um, fundamental level, like MS, uh, MS 900, sorry, uh, AZ 900. I've launched both of those now. I've also launched an AZ 900 labs sort of series. I'm going to be launching an MS 900 lab series next week as well. So um, loads of useful links. Please drop me a comment if you're not a lot of, I've been looking at my analytics, a lot of people who aren't subscribed to my channel watch my content. So if you're not subscribed, why not? You know, so all you need to do is hit that subscribe button. It takes one second. Um, and again, I'm trying to grow my channel, hit 40K subscribers earlier, well, later last week. So I want to hit 50K by the end of 2025. So thank you everybody for watching. And until next time, goodbye.